Hello and welcome to this video on building a scouting dashboard in our Tableau for Sport series. So I'm going to use some football data and I wanted to use something that was publicly available. So when we do get into this, don't be too concerned about the actual metrics that I've picked. I wasn't trying to be overly prescriptive here. And obviously, if you have your own data and work within football, you, you'll know that, that these metrics should be changed and, and should be slightly different. This video is more about the process of how you might go about building something uh, that would help you with scouting or identifying certain players and, and comparing them to, to others in their peer group. So let's jump over to Tableau and just have a look at what we're going to finish with. So this is the kind of idea of, of the dashboard that I want to build now over the next few minutes. On the left hand side, we've got some uh, filters that we can use. We can narrow down our search by different positions. So I could be looking for forwards, defenders, midfielders, that kind of stuff. I want to see players who've played over certain minutes or between a certain age. And by adjusting any of these, uh, it will then update the number of dots here. And each dot on the right hand side here represents a player. So every dot is an individual player. And I might be interested now. So for example, this top left here shows me all of the players that meet this criteria on the left uh, and how many true balls they've played, how many crosses, expected assists, above or below expected goals, these kind of things. So here's a player, for example, that's, you know, four goals above his expected goals. I want to see where he lies on some of the other metrics that I've selected. So I'll click him here. His dot will turn orange. And he will also appear in all of the other charts now as orange. Okay, so we can see that, you know, he doesn't play a lot of true balls. He's, you know, above the kind of average in terms of crosses for the players that have selected. Pass completion is low, not a huge volume of passes. Uh, and that might be down to the matches played or, or various different things that you then might go off and, and scout or, or narrow down by looking at video. All right. So it's just this idea of being able to build a dashboard for players maybe you don't know uh, and just see who fits in. So who's playing the most true balls and then where do they sit in comparison to some other metrics that you've selected. And again, you could apply this to any sport, any number of leagues. In this case, I think I'm looking at the French and German leagues. Uh, but again, as you lo go lower down the tiers, it might discover players that you, you maybe missed or uh, haven't noticed they've such high metrics in certain areas. Okay, so let's get in and uh, build this. I'm going to start from scratch. So we'll open up a blank Tableau workbook. Let's go file new. And we'll start this up from scratch. Just to say I got the data from face uh, FB reference. So let me just bring that up. So if you do want to go and get it, you can uh, follow along here. So FB Reference, this website, it's actually driven by StatsBomb data, which we've been using in our other tutorials as well. You can go in here and select from a range of different competitions. Now I've just gone with the French and the German, um, but you know, from a scouting perspective, you can imagine being able to do the same for all sorts of other divisions as well. And what's really nice is depending on which um, set of stats you want to look at here. So I've looked at standard stats and the passing types. Again, you could expand this out much further. Uh, they make it really easy to export this as a CSV file, which is what I've done here. So I've taken all the passing types. This is all the players in the Bundesliga uh, for the 2019-2020 season, exported to Excel and just save that down. OK, so that's something you can do um, if you want to follow along with this particular data set. Right. So let's walk through this. So I'm going to connect to data. I'm going to connect to Excel. And you can see here that I've got my French scouting. So we'll start with just a single file and I'll show you then at the end how we'd do this across multiple leagues. And again, the big advantage of a tool like Tableau is build it once and apply this across the board. So let's open that. I'm going to bring in my standard stats. And the first thing to notice here is you see some of the column headings aren't aren't perfectly aligned here. So uh, that's the way it comes out in the Excel file, essentially, when you save it. But it's uh, really easy to fix. We're just going to tick this use data interpreter here in the top left corner. Use data interpreter. And it goes and 
tidies up all the column names. Okay, so we can see playing time MP, playing time uh, starts, playing time minutes, and so on. Okay, all our metrics running across here. So that was the standard stats, which gives us our age and playing time and stuff like that. And then I also have this playing stats. Now, again, rather than do this in Excel and try and do VLOOKUPs or merges, I'm going to just let Tableau do that. So I'm going to drag the passing stats out. I'm using 2020.2 here. It may look slightly different in other versions. And essentially what it looks for here is a, uh, a joining condition. So how are these two tables related to each other? And because the player names are consistent, I'm happy that we can use the player name here to merge these two data sets essentially. Okay, that's not quite what it's doing, but for our purposes today, uh, that's what we'll consider. Okay, so I've got standard playing stats and then I've got my passing stats. And whenever the player name is the same in both tables, we should be able to easily ac access both uh, sets of, of data here. These are just two tabs in a, in a single worksheet that I have. Right, let's jump into Tableau. Okay, now what I'm going to build is, is this, what's known as the scatter plot. And really what I want to do is I want to build it one time, and then I'm going to replicate it, in my case, by, by six. Okay, so that we can... Uh, we can introduce additional stats in here. Okay, so again, a lot of the work is actually going to go into building this, this first one. So let's have a look. Let's take the first one. We're going to use true balls here. So pass type true balls is uh, one of the stats we're going to have a look at. So I'm going to add that to my columns. And I want to know the true balls per player. So I'm going to put the player here from the passing stats onto the detail. And we'll change these to a circle. Okay. Now I'm going to make this entire view. I know this will look a little bit silly at the moment, but just bear with me here. So player stats, or the player name by the uh, true balls, and I get these dots. Now, because there's so few of these, the dots tend to overlap. The dots tend to overlap here. So I, I want to do a little trick that's just going to separate out these dots, almost scatter them. So I'm going to come up to the rows, double click, and use a function called index. Now there's loads of videos online if you want to really understand what, what this is doing. I'm not going to go into too much right now. I'm just going to show you how it works or how to get it working. So index, compute using, and I'm going to take this uh, player. And immediately you see it expands out all of the dots. Okay, and really all this is doing is just scattering those dots uh, on, a, on a fake axis here. Okay, this number here doesn't really mean anything. It's just really to separate out these dots. Okay, so I'm even going to right click and I'm going to untick that show header. Okay, so let's tidy up a couple of other things here. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to double click on the axis at the bottom and I'm going to get rid of the title. And then I'm also going to get rid of the grid lines. Now I want to do this across the board rather than just the sheet. So I'm going to come up to format, workbook, grid lines and turn them off. And I also want to be able to select a player here. So later on, we're going to be able to click on one of these dots and it's going to highlight across the board. So again, I'm going to do that now. It won't make a lot of sense until we're in the dashboard, but I'm actually going to do that step now. So I'm going to come up to the drop down here and create parameter. And I'm going to call it player selected. It's going to be a string. I'm just going to leave everything else and just click OK. So this is going to use a thing called parameter action. Um, so we're going to be able to click on that dot and have it highlight in, in all of the other fields as well. OK, so let's uh, create a calculated field now and we'll call it player highlight. And we're simply going to say where the player equals the player selected the parameter that we just made. So this is really just a true or a false. 
OK, a true or a false. So click OK to that. I'm going to add this to the color because I want it to be colored. And at the moment we haven't selected any player, so it's going to be uh, false, which is OK for now. And then another quick change just here on the index is edit and just tick that player highlight as well. OK, so we'll come back and tidy that bit up again. Let's just get rid of some of the lines and, and maybe tidy up some things here. So I'm going to go format workbook and more down here and I'm going to go axis ticks. Actually, we'll do it this way. Format lines. Um, so for the rows, I don't want any. zero lines to be none on the rows and the columns. Yeah, okay. I'm going to right click and format this and I'm just going to change the font so it's a little bit more in the background. Okay. And I'll hide that indicator. Okay. Uh, getting there. So I'm also going to add in some of our filters. And again, we're only going to really use these in the dashboard at the end. But I like adding them to, to one sheet to start with. Um, so let's take age to filters and choose all values there. That's going to be one. Um, we can go to our standard stats. And there is uh, this MP. So let's rename that actually so it's a bit easier. So we'll say matches blade. Again, we'll do all values there, so we can filter by that. Playing time minutes is another filter that I'm going to want. Click OK there. And then we also have a position. OK, so position. And for now, I'm just going to turn all of these on. But these are defender, midfielder, and so on. OK, so they're my kind of four main uh, filters that I'm looking at. I've got each player, so I can see the player name the uh, number of passes they've made, and then this index. And again, what we could do is just tidy up the, uh, the tooltip a little bit. So I might take out the index. And take out the, this, and we could just maybe get the name in. Okay, so we'll put the name as slightly bigger. And it tells me how many true balls. Okay. And the reason I'm spending so much time formatting this sheet is that I just want to replicate this a number of times and swap out the metric. So that's really what I'm doing here. So lastly, I think let's change the title name here and we'll just call it True Balls. I'm going to make this 12, semi bold, and we'll center it. Okay, uh, this is looking good. I think we're pretty much ready to go now. So that's our true balls. So again, I'll just give that a name at the bottom. And then we, what we can do is right click and duplicate this sheet. So right click and duplicate. And now we can pick another metric. And we've done all the work really. So now we're just gonna swap this true balls on the columns for another metric. So we've got see in our passing stats here we've got something to do with crosses CRS so pass type crosses so what I'm going to do is drag and drop that on top of the existing field okay and again I just have to tidy up this bottom axis that should be the only change I have to make uh, we'll format it to a slightly grayed out font okay and now we can call this crosses And let's go again. So we just duplicate this as many times as we need. Um, so passes live is a open play passes. So again, I'm just going to swap these out and just make my quick changes. I know this is a little bit tedious just to set it up, but um, we'll just go through this process. And 
volume open to A passes. And again, just to say, I, these metrics should possibly be probably be per ninety and and different things. I, I'm just I'm just going through the the, the process uh, more than anything. Uh, you can apply this with your own sporting knowledge. It's just really from a, a technical point of view how you might set something up like this. Okay, uh, so the next one we might do a calculation for. So we might look at, I'll rename the sheet now, so we'll go above or below XG. Okay, so I, we have an expected goals figure. If we go to our standard stats here, there's a do, 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 performance, there it is. Oh no, just expected goals here. And then under performance, we have goals. Okay, so let's create a calculated field for this one. Okay, so what I want to know is where they plus or minus expected goals. And what we want to do is say, so for each player, we're going to take the actual goals, which is performance goals. Take away the expected XG. Okay, so this is creating calculated fields. This particular measure isn't in our, our data set, but we can easily add it. And we've got this expected goals. And again, I'm just going to swap that out now. So we can see we've got people going left and right. These are people who have scored more goals than uh, they were expected and less goals than they were expected. Okay, and again, just tidy up the axis here. And format and just keeping these colors and everything consistent makes a big difference I think okay so we duplicate again and um, this time we might just use the expected assists okay and again I'm gonna take that out and right click on format Okay, so we're nearly there. Uh, let's just rename this one and rename the type of here. So this would be expected assists. How do they rename this? No. Okay. So that's what have we got one two three four five so let's create uh, one more which is going to be our pass completion percentage and again this involves a calculated field so sorry we want to duplicate our sheet again and a pass completion so we have to calculate this uh, so create a calculated field and it's going to be now, let me remember what it is. It's the sum of the ATT, which is attempts. And it's actually gonna be the sum of this CMP, outcome CMP is outcome completed. So outcome CMP divided by the total attempts gives us a pass completion percentage. I'm gonna right click and make sure we're using a percentage and I don't want any decimal points on it. Okay, so again, we've got our calculated field here and we'll just swap out that measure. Again, I'm gonna edit the axis. Now, what I'm gonna do here is you'll have a couple of players who've probably played very few games that are, you know, might be zero or 5% pass completion. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna fix the start of this axis to start at around uh, 45%, something like that. Okay, so it's just a little bit more realistic um, in terms of what I want to do. That's just my, my preference here. And format, and again, just tidy up the font on that. Okay, uh, so again, let's just give this the title. the sheet and name down here. Okay, so these are our six 
and the key metrics that we've got. And really now we want to put them into a dashboard and I also want to be able to select one of the players. So let's go to a new dashboard. I'm going to turn on in the checkbox here in the bottom to add a new title. And I'm going to add in a couple of containers. Okay, now again, there's some great resources on the internet if you type in Tableau containers and figuring out how these work um, is, is, is kind of key. If you want to go into more detail, I'm, I'm going to use these. So keep an eye on, on how I use these and, and why that might help as we go. So the first thing is I'm going to add a horizontal container here because I know that I want filters on the left and then my, my charts here on the right hand side. So that's the first thing I'm going to set up. I'm going to use this text tool just to give me a little cheat. So let me just show you what that means. So when I'm dragging in a, a new container, what I want is this blue outline box around my container. You'll see as I move this, that that blue box kind of changes shape or, or where it is. Okay. So I want one there and another vertical container beside it. So you see now I have my split screen. So I can delete this text placeholder. That was just to help me um, guide them into, into place. So we're going to have filters here on the left and my charts here on the right hand side. Okay. So again, let's start and let's think about the right hand side. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, almost like a comic strip, if you imagine. Um, the different charts going across. Now there's different ways of doing this, but again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a, a little text tool here just to give me a hand. And what I want is three horizontal containers in here. So I'm going to put one, two, three. So there's my three. And now the big advantage of, of putting it inside a container is if I double click on one, it shows me the full container size. Okay. And something I can do then is distribute evenly. So I can make sure that at the moment these four containers, but I'm going to delete this now in a second, but these four are all exactly the same size. So you're not fiddling around trying to move these arrow, these boxes up and down to, to get them all the same. Once they're inside a container, you can distribute them evenly. So now let me take out that text. So we should now have three containers and you can see how they've resized to be, to be as I want them. So now let's bring in our sheets. So let's go uh, through balls. And beside that, I'm going to put crosses. And again, the advantage of these two being in a container is I can distribute them evenly as well. So make sure that they're side by side or exactly the same size. Uh, let's go with expected goals and expected assists beside it. Again, double click, distribute evenly. And lastly, let's go with open play passes, added volume and pass completion. And my last check then is distribute contents evenly. Okay. Okay. So that's the basics of our, our chart. Now let's add in uh, the filter, the filters here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just so we can distinguish this filters box, I'm going to give it a, a light gray background. Okay, just so it stands out a little bit. And I might also give it some padding here of about 15. So it has a little bit of room to breathe. And that's probably something you could go back. I won't do all of these now, but I'd probably go back and add, add some spacing around uh, all of these uh, charts as well. Okay, so I won't go through all those now, but good idea to add in a little bit more white space to give it some breathing room here. Okay, uh, next is I want to put in the filters. So the filters haven't come in here, but let's go to true balls as a, just an example sheet. Click on the little drop down and the filters here I'm going to add. So let's go with age, matches played, uh, minutes played, there was one other one I wanted. Yeah, position. Okay. Don't need this highlighter. Uh, let's make position a multi-value dropdown. And I'm also going to customize and use this apply button as well. We'll see that now in a second. I'll put in some text. 
I'm going to say use the filters below to narrow search criteria. Uh, and let's make that a little bit more prominent. Okay. These should apply to everything, but let me just check if I do that. No, so these are just applying to true balls. So that's the next thing I want to do is make sure that these apply to all using this data source. And let's do that. For all of the charts here. Okay, and maybe reorganize. So position might be my first one. And we're looking at age. And again, I won't do all of these now, but I'd recommend that you do, you make um, you make this a little bit more intuitive for people. So filter by age or uh, select, this is actually position, uh, select select position to filter. Filter charts. Okay. Remember, people who are using this may not be fully up to speed with Tableau, uh, so it's a good idea to fill that in. And again, you do that for, for the other ones. So a couple of uh, finishing items here is I want to add in the interactivity. So I want to be able to click on a dot. So for example, you know, I, I know we may not be scouting the best players in the world. It might be more applicable to, to for this type of dashboard to be players you're not overly familiar with and things like that. But let's say for argument's sake, I want to be able to click on Neymar and I want to see where he is in relation to this group of players for crosses, expected goals and so on, so on. Okay. And we've set up the parameter. So now we just need to set up what's known as the parameter control. So when we take the action, what happens? That's the last bit we need to do with that parameter we created earlier on. So I'm going to go dashboard actions. I'm going to add and this change parameter action. Okay, so I wanted to update all of the sheets. The parameter is player selected and the field here is the player name. Okay, that's all there is to it. So it's going to affect all of the sheets. The parameter name is what we gave it earlier, which is player selected. And the field it's going to update is this player, player name field. Let's click OK and OK. And now what I should be able to do is click on Neymar. And I get a true and a false. Okay, so you'll see uh, Neymar, Neymar's dot basically appears in some of the others now. It's a little bit blocked out. I'll fix that now in a second, but you can see that it's appeared here. So let's go back to the first sheet, the uh, true ball sheet, and I'm going to update the colors here. So uh, I'm going to use a different color palette and let's make false and we make the true the orange and I'm going to push the true over here on top so this means the true will sit on top now unfortunately I forgot to do that at the very start so I need to just quickly do that for each sheet here and you can see I only have to change the colors once and they've been added across Let me go and change that color again. I'm not sure I like that. Oh, it'll do for now. Uh, It'll do for now, okay? We can play around probably with the colors. It's quite bright. Um, the other thing I, I forgot to do here is I probably add a little border into those dots so that they they stand out a little bit more. That's probably too much, but you get the idea. Uh, you might add in a border. So they're a little bit easier to see. And again, I, I would need to do that on each, on each sheet. We'll leave that off for now. Okay. So now we're able to select a player in any one of the categories. So for example, who's this player that's had so many expected assists? We could click on them and see where they are in relation to everything else. Okay, so they're 
below average in terms of pass completion. They make a lot of passes in a game. We can see this is relative to the rest of the league, that kind of stuff. But then maybe we want to start filtering. So I'm interested in players who are, you know, under 28, who've played at least 11 games last year. And maybe who are MF, so midfielders. So we can select those and click apply. And suddenly you're beginning to narrow down this this kind of search. And, and then, you know, what starts to come up? So who's this now? Still Neymar. Uh, that kind of thing. You can start to click and see who's, who's above or below and be able to scout players and maybe see, you know, very quickly where they are across the board. Okay. So I hope you enjoy that. That's a, a quick run through. I'll publish my finished workbook uh, on Tableau Public. So you have an idea. I've added one or two uh, small minor touches to it, um, but that should be that should take you through most of what I did to to create this. So thank you very much.